What is up guys? My name is Lex. Today is Tuesday, September 27th. My plan was to head out to Vegas on September 28th, but I did have to change those plans because this is the state of Florida right here. And this is about where I live. And that is a big ass hurricane coming right for the state of Florida. Well, the hurricane was gonna be hitting Wednesday evening, Wednesday night, exactly the same time that I was gonna be flying out to come to Vegas. So I decided to change my flight plans, leave two days earlier. I got in last night, Monday night. I played a quick session at the Bellagio and I ran super hot, making over $2,000 in two hours. I didn't film that session, but I'm going back there today, playing some 510 No Limit. Hopefully we can run good as well. Let's get down to the table. Let's get to the action. Let's go. I leave the condo in Vegas and head on over to the Bellagio, sit down at a must-move game buy-in for $1,500, which is the max, and get into this first hand where I look down on the button at Pocket Kings. It's 8.01 p.m. There's an under-the-gun raise of 30. I three-bet to 130, and he ends up making the call. So we go heads up here, our first flop in Vegas, and it's pretty good. Jack, 10, 6, 2 clubs. He checks to me and I bet bigger on this board, $230, and he makes the call. Turn card five of spades, now bringing two flush draws on the board, and he checks over to me. On this turn card, I think the best thing to do is just bet and continue to bet pretty big as well. We want to charge his straight draws and flush draws, also his hands like pocket queens and ace jack. Players tend to play fairly tight from early position here at the Bellagio. So I expect him to have a pretty strong range. Now, of course, we could be outflopped here by hands like pocket tens and pocket jacks, but given the fact that I started the hand with around $2,000, I just don't think there's anything I can do if he did flop a set on me. So I'm gonna bet big again. I make it $500. My plan here is to bet $500 and then on any brick river card, shove all in for my last $800. Now let's say the river is a queen, an ace, a spade or a club, maybe an eight or a nine. I potentially would check that one back, but it doesn't come to that. After thinking for a while, my opponent lets his hand go and we get the chips pushed in our direction. It's now 8.40 p.m. and I peel back pocket kings. There's an under the gun raised to 30. I three bet to $100 and now the cut off the same player from the last hand, cold four bets to $250. Action folds around to the under the gun player who folds and with the action back over on me, I have to figure out now what am I gonna do with pocket kings facing a $250 raise. Now I started the hand with a little over $2,000 and my opponent slightly covers me. When this opponent cold four bets, I put him on hands like jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace, king, and maybe even ace, queen suited. Now, all those hands I just mentioned were ahead of except for pocket aces. So I actually think this could be a spot to put in a five bet myself, especially that we're out of position sitting pretty deep. So that is what I do. A fifth raise coming in here pre-flop. I make it $610 to be honest. I don't know if I have ever five bet pre-flop with pocket kings, but we're here at the Bellagio making it 610 bucks. My opponent doesn't snap fold right away. He has to see my stack. I show him how much I'm working with. He goes into the tank for a while. If he rips it all in here, I actually think I could fold pocket kings, but he decides to make the call for $610 and we have a massive pot brewing. When he calls here pre-flop, I can now narrow his range down to jacks, queens, kings, aces, and ace kings. So when we see a 10, 9, 6 board, I would say it's actually a pretty good flop for me. But I decide to do something a little bit funky here, and I decide to check over to my opponent. You may be wondering, why are you ever checking kings on a 10 high board when there's no ace? And I'm going to explain my thought process here. On this flop in a 5 bet pre-flop spot, we're either going to be way ahead or way behind. If he has jacks, queens, or ace king, he's only going to have 2 to 3 outs to win the pot. If he has pocket aces, then now we only have 2 outs to win this pot. So I'm really not worried about any cards coming off on the turn. Because if he does have those hands that we're beating, he only has two outs to win. If we are losing here, we only have two outs to improve. 
My thoughts at the time were, if he does have jacks or queens and I come out here with a huge bet after 5-betting preflop, he may just fold out those hands, which would not be good for me. But if I check over to him, it is possible he will put out a bet with queens or jacks, and then I can either call or check raise all in. Now the other thing that if I check over to him and he has ace-king, he could be sensing weakness and maybe try to bluff me. My plans at the time were to check, and if he bet... I was going to check raise all in, but unfortunately, our plane backfires when he instantly checks back. And the turn card is the worst turn card in the deck. It's the Ace of Diamonds. The worst card in the deck because now it improves Ace King, which is very likely what he could have. I check over to him, and with a little over $1,200 in the middle, he bets out four black chips. Now, this is just a nasty spot because basically, we beat nothing now. We lose to Ace King. I don't think he's ever betting this sizing with queens or jacks. If he somehow had ace-five suited or ace-queen, he's now beating us as well. But for this price, in a five-bet pot, I gotta see the river. Let's see what happens here. So I put in $400 and we go to the last card, which is a seven. I check over to him and he checks back. Maybe we could win. Nope. He has ace-king suited and we were way ahead pre-flop. We couldn't hold up. He hit the three outer on the turn and he ends up winning over a $2,000 pot here. Sometimes in poker you're going to win and sometimes you're not. We were 84% favored to win this hand on the flop versus his particular holding. Now I do know if I would have put out a bet on the flop, I would have just won the hand, but I decided to check for reasons that I stated earlier. Can't really be results oriented in this game, but I do want you guys to pause the video now. Go down into the comments below and let me know what you would do in this situation if you were holding my hands with pocket kings in a 5-bet pot. 8.53 now p.m. I have ace-queen in middle position. I raised to 30 and the big blind calls. Flop comes out ace-high. My opponent leads on the flop, leads on the turn, checks the river. I bet and she calls and we end up beating ace-jack for a decent sized pot. After this, the floor manager comes over to me and hands me a rack and tells me there is a seat open on the main game, which means I must move over there to keep that game full. So I head on over there and sit down in seat number eight, my least favorite seat to sit in for vlogging. And the table looks decent, a lot of money, not too much action though. However, we get pocket jacks our very first hand. We have the button and under the gun raises the 30. There's two callers and I make it $150. Back over to the under the gun player who four bets me, he makes it 450 bucks. A lot of action early on in this session, getting four bet with pocket jacks. We just played a five bet pot earlier with pocket kings. Now it's an interesting spot here. My opponent has $1,500 to start the hand, which means he has about $1,000 behind. Now this is still 100 big blinds. I don't really want to get in 150 big blinds with pocket jacks at a tighter main game here at the Bellagio. I do think we could fold here sometimes versus particular players, but I think the best option is to call. If the flop comes out safe, we'll probably just have to go with our hand. If the flop comes out with an ace, a king, or a queen, we could just fold. I do end up making the call for $300 more. So we're heads up in position four bet pot with pocket jacks and the dealer puts out a safe flop for us. Five, six deuce rainbow. Now the only problem with this is that if he has an over pair on this board, I'm just going to end up doubling him up with the action over on the under the gun player. He decides to check, which I think is quite interesting. I do think he could be trapping here with aces or kings sometimes, but he could be giving up with his bluffs that he has pre-flop, maybe king-queen, ace-queen, ace-jack. He can have ace-king as well. So instead of checking back and giving a free card, I decide to bet small, $280. The under-the-gun player doesn't fold right away, and after thinking for about 30 seconds, he decides to jam it all in. Can't fold now, so I make the call. I tell the dealer... Only one to run out for us, so we're all in here. Pocket jacks, four bet pot, over $2,000 in the middle. So you have, I have covered. Over you. Covered, yeah. Yeah, you covered.
what's going on. <laughs> we end up rivering a set in this massive three thousand dollar pot i thought i was behind but if you go back and listen my opponent said ace high on the river so he must have had ace king or ace queen either way we end up taking down over a three thousand dollar pot here with now over a four thousand five hundred dollar stack a nice way to start our first day here at the bellagio about 10 minutes later, still riding the high from that last hand, I peel back pocket nines in the big blind and I 3-bet a button open to 120, and now the button who looks like an older recreational player 4-bets me to $330. I decide to peel here, which sometimes I think I could just fold versus this player type, looking for a set which we do not get. The board comes out king jack 5, I check, he bets, and we fold. Something that casinos do at 510 that they don't do at 1, 2, or 2, 5 is the must move into the main game. You may not be familiar with this, but at the higher stakes, they do must move games that filter into the main game. Now, what happens is the first game that starts in the day is the main game, and then every other game that starts after that is a must move that filters into the main game. Now, this is great because it allows one game to always be running. If your game gets short, you just get filtered to the main game, which will always be full. But the bad thing about this is when you get to a main game, especially here in Vegas, it's mostly always pros. The reason for this is that pro poker players usually play 6, 10, 12, almost 15 hour sessions sometimes. Now recreational players maybe only play 2, 3, or 4 hour sessions, or they bust out early. So a lot of the time what happens is there's a lot of recreational players in the must move game and either they bust out or they decide to leave before they make it to the main game, which means a lot of the time the main games are just really bad games full of some of the best players in the room. It's not the most profitable situation to play against the best players in the room, but I only have a couple options. I could leave the game, wait two hours and get back on the must move. I could drop back down with stakes and play 2-5, or I could try to battle it out with these guys. I do decide to stay in this main game because I do think I can still have a positive hourly. If I take a two hour break, then I'm not making any money. If I drop back down the 2-5, 500 cap, my hourly probably decreases three or four times. So. I decide to stick it out here and I also suggest doing a $20 straddle under the gun. Everybody agrees except for the nit on my left who says he doesn't want to straddle. So I guess we're just going to play 510. It's kind of a bad game, but I flew all the way here to play some poker. Let's just try to battle it out with these guys. I open it up here at 10.30 p.m. with 6-7 of spades to $30. The nit on my left who didn't want to straddle. Three bets out of the small blind to 120. I hate giving nits action, but this is just a mandatory call. A suited connector in position. I end up putting the chips in the middle and we see a 10-5-3 board. One spade. I have a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. He bets out $80. I could raise here, but I decide to call turns an ace which is going to be a card way better for him he decides to check and i just don't think this is a card i should be bluffing on so i check back rivers another ace he bets and i fold my seven high it is now exactly one orbit later and i have another suited connector this time six four of diamonds middle position makes it 30 i re-raise to 90 and now the big blind another tighter player cold four bets me to $240. Now I'm pretty sure this player is just always going to have a monster when he cold four bets at a position, mostly aces or kings. I definitely want to fold my six high except he has over $4,000. I have over $4,000 in my stack. I just don't think I can fold here in position. If he does have aces or kings and we flop a monster like a straight, trips, or two pair, I could win almost an $8,000 pot. So I end up making the call and get a terrible flop of Jack 10 3. No diamond. He leads out for a massive bet of $400. And I fold. After I fold, he does in fact show me he had pocket aces. So pre flop read was correct, but the poker gods just weren't in our favor. My stack is now down to around $3,600. So I've lost about $1,000 worth of my profit. Probably just giving a little bit too much action preflop. Finally, a seat opens on my left and I can get a better seat for the vlog. I snap a picture for my Instagram and then get into this next hand where I have pocket jacks. I raise to $30 and the big blind calls. 
King 7, 8, heads up, he checks, and I check back. Turn deuce of hearts, he checks again. I bet $50, and he calls. River card is one of the best ones in the deck. It's the king of spades. He checks for a third time. I don't ever think he's going to have a strong hand here that's beating us, but he can have a hand that potentially could call a big bet. Maybe an eight, a seven, pocket nines, or pocket tens. So I go with an over bet here on this river. I make it $300, trying to get paid off by him, but not this time. He folds, and we get the pot. Now we're playing shorthanded, and the cutoff player makes it $30. He only has about $800 in his stack, so I decided to just call in the small blind with king-queen offsuit, and the big blind calls as well. We go three ways to an ace-nine-five flop with two spades. Checks to the cutoff who bets $30. I don't think he's too strong here, so I decided to float out of position. Basically, I just don't think the cutoff has much betting $30 into three players. I think I could potentially have the best hand, or I could even try to bluff and take it away on the turn or the river. When the big blind calls, that changes my plans, especially when the turn is a seven of hearts. We don't improve, so I check, looking to just fold to any aggression, but the action checks all the way around. River cards the three of spades, and now that changes everything. Front door flush gets there. Cutoff didn't bet the turn. The big blind didn't raise to flop. I don't feel like anyone really has a strong hand here. I have the king of spades in my hand as a blocker, so I decide to put out a bluff here. A $200 bet over pot size here. I'm hoping my opponents will fold an under pair to the ace or a weaker ace as well. The big blind folds very quickly, and now we're down to heads up. I'm hoping my image will pay off for me. I haven't bluffed basically all day. I've been winning some big pots. My stack is over $3,000. Come on, let's get this bluff through. Not this time. The cutoff puts in the call. I tell him king high and he shows a six offsuit. The rules for no limit Texas Hold'em is that top pair beats no pair and we lose this one. Over the next two hours, I can't really get much going. I end up calling a three bet with ace three of spades and missing. I end up switching to another main game trying to find some action and just cannot really get into any big spot. So after six hours of play, I end up racking up my chips and booking a small win of around $200. All right, day number one officially done here in Vegas. Played 510 at the Bellagio around six and a half hours today and profited around 200 bucks. Interesting swingy day. We had that big hand with pocket kings where I five bet pre-flop and then checked a 10 high board. Uh, you can argue that uh, I misplayed that hand possibly. Uh, got unlucky on the turn, he hit the ace and we ended up losing that one, but we got it all in with pocket jacks in a four bet pot and hit a jack on the river, but we were ahead the whole time and we ended up scooping down like almost a $3,000 pot there. And then some hands back and forth, back and forth. Um, so just basically broke even on the day. One thing that I always have to work on when I come here to Vegas is adapting to the tighter play style, especially here at the Bellagio. Um, it's a 1500 cap game, so it's only 150 big blinds. People play much tighter. They three bet very, very strong ranges compared to maybe Texas or Florida when people are three betting and four betting a little bit lighter. I do think I'm giving too much action to these tighter, nittier regs who just sit around and wait for queens, kings, and aces. Tonight I called, I think, three or four three bets, and I called one four bet uh, with hands that I probably should just fold preflop. Um, so I do think that's a leak of mine here in Vegas because even if I make my hand, it's hard to get paid off by them because they're so tight. Uh, but I do like playing here. I like playing at the Bellagio. It's just a great atmosphere. Uh, I really like the chips as well. Like the orange is my favorite color. Um, so having the orange chips, the $10 chips, I don't know. It's just, it's a cool place to play. Um, but sometimes the games are just a little, little too tight. But I still have about six more days here more videos for you guys i hope you enjoyed this one first vegas vlog of many coming up hit that like button comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel until next time i'll see you